ready for the last talk today. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me introduce uh, Pierre Wellemek. He arrived a few hours ago from Belgium and will show you PMP, a uh, new, is it new? It's rather new. Pretty new Negus configuration front end. Have fun. So, good afternoon. So, first, let me thank you for giving me the opportunity to come here and present PMP. My name is uh, Pierre Walmack. I'm a network engineer for Belnet. Belnet is the uh, national research network in uh, Belgium. And I'm here to speak about PMP, which is really a tool that evolved in the year to configure uh, monitoring software like Nagus. So what do we have on the agenda for today? So first, uh, we will go and explain what is PMP, then speak about some of the uh, decision we made, so why we choose this environment. Uh, afterwards, I would like to, uh, to show you how easy it is with PMP to configure uh, a monitoring software and to have a running environment in uh, really in a few steps. <coughs> Afterwards, I want to to speak about and to ask uh, to explain to answer the questions: Why, uh, why PMP? Uh, who is PMP? Where do we come from? Where where do we come from? And then speak about uh, a little bit more about the overview of the the concept, how it works, the architecture architecture of PMP, uh, its installation. Where do we stand today and speak about the roadmap? Where do we want to go tomorrow? Okay. <coughs> so, what is PMP? Uh, PMP stands for a Proactive Monitoring Platform. It's really a real time uh, Nagus configuration web application. So, we decided to go for a web applications to, to be certain that it's really platform independent, easy to use. You just use your browser and here we go, you can configure your network. I wanted to say to that, it's also, it's a response to, to a problem that uh, yeah, we had uh, in our network. It's really the challenge to have a configuration that is always up to date and it's easy to build. The, the roots of this tool has to be found in a, in a layer 3 environment. This is important because it's, really, it's based for an ISP network. So it's really, yeah, what it understands the, the, the best is really routers and a routing environment. Uh, this last year we, has all, uh, we have been pushing a lot of functionalities for a layer 2 network, but the, the root of the, the the tools is really in a layer three environment. It has also a deep understanding of your topology because we are reading a lot of information from each device. So it's very easy afterwards to, to start and give you the topology of your network with this information. Um, once you have all this information and you know the topology, it's rather simple with out of, uh, out of the shelf tools to represent it and to give you a graphical representation of your network. Um, also, what is very important is, uh, and this is something I'm emphasizing more, more and more, it's rules-based because each network is different. So it's important that we can, at a certain time, put some rules to say, okay, this is how, this is a config I want to see, and this is what is important for the, for my environment, that this is what I don't want to see or don't want to environment, to, to monitor. And what I have been putting in light gray, but here, um, it's also, uh, because we, we have all of this information about the network, about the device, it's um, uh, rather easy to, uh, if you do a periodic checking of your network, to predict and to be proactive on what you are, uh, what is happening in your network. So this is something it's that I'm really uh, focusing on on this on this tool. 
So now that we have a little bit more information on PMP, I wanted to speak about really the choice that we made uh, regarding the tool. So PMP is really um, designed, at the base it was really designed to configure an Agios environment. Uh, today it evolves also to uh, configure also an OMD environment, but in the beginning it was really Nagios. So why did we choose Nagios? Because it was really widely used. Um, and in my eyes, it's really more than Nagios. It's really an ecosystem. It's uh, Nagios, it's a lot of tools, it's a lot of add-ons, it's a lot of really out-of-the-shelf uh, yeah, tools that you can, uh, or kit that you can really use and put together to get your environment. Um, just I name here uh, a few of them, but uh, like Nagvis, PNP for Nagus, you have really a lot of things that are in these ecosystems. And so the idea is really to, to broaden the picture, to be able to monitor, uh, to use the tool that you need and the, yeah. And last but not least, this tool is really built on many years of development. So we were using this environment for 10 years and this has been evolving in the time, starting from small things until it became a PMP recently. So speaking about OMD, so why did we choose OMD? It's because really, um, I, yeah, o OMD stands for Open Monitoring Distribution. I think many people should know it. Um, before we used OMD, we really had to install a lot of tools separately and make them all work together. So um, recently, yeah. Recently, uh, I discovered that and I said, okay, that would be really nice if something can just do all of this work for me. And yeah, I tried OMD and it was really the answer to this problem, to be able to uh, integrate all the tools we need, something very easy to, to deploy and uh, to install. And it has all, I, most of the, the add-ons I was looking for. As I said, this is a very recent evolution because, yeah, before I used the same tools, but I had to really integrate everything together and was not, sometimes it was not easy. And really the, the nice thing I found about it is, yeah, I had nothing to modify nearly. It's really the config was there, I just plug in there and it was running. So one config fits it all. So just to illustrate this with a few pictures, so as you see with OMD, you get Nagios, the GUI, CheckMK, Truck, Nagvis, uh, Insinga, and uh, Shinken. So you have a lot of tools that are just there and you can just use it uh, really out of the box. Uh, well, just as also, this is uh, PNP for Nagios. So you get the graphs, you get a lot of things. It's just really, yeah, you put your config and uh, here it is, it works. Um, so just one or the picture. This is our network, and really to build this, it's yeah, a few click. So to come back to our agenda, I wanted to speak about uh, to introduce PMP, to speak about some of our basic choices, and now I wanted to to show you how easy it is really. If you want to start to, if you want to start from scratch, you have an unknown network, or you can really build your config in a, in a few very simple steps. So I will not make a live demo. Oops. So if you start the tools, this is what you will be presented with. So this is a blank screen. The first thing you have to do is really uh, first go in the settings options, and there uh, in this menu you will have to declare your groups, your users, and the basic setup of your network. So if you want to uh, create groups and add users, this is the, the screen that you can use to do that. Uh, so you have al always, yeah, um, 
In the, the top of the screen, you can always see where you are. So here we are in setti settings, groups. Then you have a few buttons to create user, to add user, to create new groups, to delete groups. And so you go in the process, you create your groups, you add your user into it. And when you're happy with it, then you can go in the, uh, still in the settings, in the network, and here we start to discover on networks. So, uh, so in the settings, you, f yeah, you choose the add or edit to add a new network or to edit one. <coughs> and once this is done, you present it with this screen. So this is the add option. So in the add options, the first thing you have to do is really name your network that you want to configure. Afterwards, you have to link your network to a group. And this is a rather recent addition. What we allow uh, the user is to uh, create different ranges, and so administration ranges. And in this of, uh, so yeah, and each range has a name. So this means that if you have a network and you have different mani of, uh, management ranges, you can just add them one after the other one and then really start to uh, discover each of these ranges to in your network. So you give the name of your range, you give... Um, <laughs> You provide the, the management range, uh, the prefix length, then the community, because most of it is based on SNMP, uh, the, a pattern for the, the device you want to monitor, so the name of device you want to monitor, and then also some patterns of, on the, name of the naming of the interface you want to, uh, to include or not in your, uh, in your scan. Once you've done, you've done all of this, you will uh, start the discovery process. So what do we do then? It's really, so the stool will start a small daemon that will go and uh, process each of the IP address in the range you have been providing. And each time it does a ping and then goes with SNMP, try to find all the information he needs to, uh, yeah, to put this in his catalog. So this is, yeah. Rather simple, it just takes uh, like a few minutes to discover all your range, and afterwards you provide it here with uh, the list of all your devices in the range you are discovering. So once this is done, you have just to say, okay, save, and your, your range of devices, all your devices, are just saved uh, in the background for you. So let's say we have done this, we have our network now, it's ready, we want to to go further and start to really build a configuration, what you will have to do is you will have to go in the uh, operation part of the network of the of the tools, and then select the network you want to uh, to monitor, <coughs> and then you see on the left side you have all the devices that were discovered dur discovered during the discovering operation. So for each of these devices, then you will have to uh, use the refresh button, so then the tools will uh, go on this device and really lit, uh, read a lot of MIPS and get all the information on this device, so DBGP, USPF, uh, CDP, and the information that we are fetching there is depending on really the brand of the device also, because not all the devices support the same feature. So you do this, and so for every device you go, you do your refresh, uh, and you collect all the information from this uh, from this device. Um, yeah, some colon are hidden, but yeah. Um, so there you will you will see. So for each of each of the interface on a device, you will get so it the IP address is configured too, and also if this one has a a peer. So if we find some uh, neighboring router uh, on this interface. So for us, this is very important because uh, if we find some another device at the other side, we know that this is a backbone link. Otherwise, we know that this is more like a, a niche link to a customer to something else. <coughs> um, on the right side of the screen, 
many information, but uh, you have then the add to config. So by default, by the rules that are integrated in the, in the tools, it will select what is the most meaningful interface to, to monitor. So of course, uh, the tools cannot know everything. So if you want to override this choice, you just click on the button on the left and you, on the, yeah, on the, and you just un unselect it. And then, yeah, if you show select it, you will see that this, this interface has just disappeared from your list. Um, I think this is more or less all I had to show on this slide. So, yeah, so once you have done a refresh of your complete network, you have been rediscovering everything, you have uh, the, the opportunity, because this is really the aim of these tools, to build your config. So if you hit on the build config there on top of your screen, um, what will happen is that the, your configuration is already, uh, will be generated and it will be set in a dedicated environment there you can test it, and if you're happy with it, you can apply it. So this means that when you apply it, it must work. So on for every interfaces, we we have a lot of flags. If you want to see the flags, you have uh, the uh, uh, flag information that you cli if you click on it, you will have the full help. If you unclick, it will just be reduced. Once you have done all of this, if you wish, you can also uh, display the topology of your network as it was discovered. It's, um, so for this, you go on the topology button, and then you will, uh, with Graphits, it's Graphits who is building this, we'll, uh, just we will create a topology file, and Graphics will just uh, with one of the algorithms you have been selecting, display your graph, and this should look like this. So this is just one of the network we are running. But of course there are a lot of algorithms, you choose the one that best fit. So yeah, my idea was behind this that at one time I can grab this information to create f the, the configuration for NACVIS or something like this. So that was really, and then automatically you go from your discovery and you end up with having, yeah, up the complete environment, running environment with the graphs, the, yeah, the, uh, your topology views and so on and so forth. But it's one of the ideas not yet finalized. So let's come back to the agenda, so I don't know it's more clear what PMP does and its advantages. So now I wanted to, yeah, to go more in depth, wh why would, you would, would one choose PMP, then who's PMP, and yeah, go a little bit more on the history of the tool. So why would someone want to use PMP? It's for me to install the to simplify the installation, simplify the configuration process. So you just discover your network, you say build config, and here we go. You have your configuration and you have your environment that is your monitoring environment running. To simplify the maintenance process, if you want if something change, it's very easy. You just refresh the information on your device and you continue, you process, you build a new config, and here we go. To benefit from the expertise of the tool, there are many rules, there are many things that are inside the tools, but so it was really done there to, to help you to have uh, directly the most efficient uh, configuration and to be sure that anything that needs to be monitored is in there by the rules you have been defined, defining. And also for me, uh, so far, or when I made the search, I found no perfect solution um, for my problem. So it means that often it was working on a device base and many things we required development to make it work. So at certain times, we arrived to that solution. <coughs> so I'm a lazy, so 
if the tools can do it for me, so it's really the idea is really to reduce the burden of the monitoring, the TCO to add flexibility. And uh, today this works with uh, the device I had on hand, so it's four stands Cisco Juniper, and since a few weeks, months with HP also. Uh, and last but not least, so what I explained before is to be proactive. If you if you start to run this in the background automatically for you on a regular basis, you can then start to, to see trends of your network. You see, okay, this is deteriorating. I have this behavior on my routing protocols. And so at a certain times you can start then afterwards to say, okay, uh, report the problems to the user and say, okay, maybe you should take action on this side or on this side. So today uh, there are many ideas. It's not yet encoded, but it's really where we want to go with this with this tool. <coughs> so who is PMP? It's mainly me. <laughs> so uh, a network engineer at Bennett. So we monitoring like 200 nodes today. Um, and I would say me alone it wouldn't work. So it's a few friends have me helping me to to get these things up and running. Yep. So I think it's interesting also to to show where we are coming from and why how we arrived there. So I many years ago we had a Nagus installation and um so Nagus was used for all what are all, all the servers and the network and we had uh, what we called at that time the watch list and this was really a, a huge press spreadsheet <coughs> with a description of the complete network the the problem with this is that this watch list was very hard to fill it up and to keep always up to date so this is why afterwards we had to find some other ways to do things afterwards uh in the, the next years, we have been adding a lot of things and we have been doing like, yeah, funny things with this, like monitoring multicast. Uh, also, we have the notion of links, adding new, new features. We had our own weather map. So many things were done at that time, but uh, nothing really on the configuration side. And uh, in 2008, I had, um, I broke my leg. so. I had a lot of time, and this is how NCT started. Um, yeah, so it was really to address the problem of um, to get the good, yeah, and the good and up-to-date configuration, because the thing is that if if we have to rely on people to do it, I'm sorry to say that, but sometimes it's not perfectly done or the naming is not correct and things like this. So I really wanted to have a tools that does it for me completely and really I have two buttons to click and it was done and so I just started to, to code that and at that time I called it NCT Nagios configuration tool so I had to find a name I found one and um, it was really mainly um, two-step so <coughs> you yeah you started directly the discovery and then afterwards you build your config. So it was no fancy thing, it was really pure HTML and a click, start discovering, it took really a long time. You got your configuration, you say, okay, I'm fine with it, and push it to the, to the monitoring daemon. <coughs> uh, and the idea was really to make things really more and more automatic. So, not long ago, um, we, we thought, okay, it's nice to go further than just NCT, to have a better GUI, um, yeah, really to, to make it fancier. And this is why we came with uh, PMP. So PMP, is the idea is the same, it's really to build your configuration and um, to make the discovery of your network. 
but really in a more user-friendly way. So I spent a lot of time just to design the menu, to see how things, where things should be in the menu, and so on and so forth, just to make it as user-friendly as we could. It was really completely rewritten. Um, I'm working hard to get it uh, open source, so to remove all the things that are related to the network I know, and so that it can go in the open. It has been, yeah, I got the, the permission also to make it uh, open source so that I can give it to the community. Uh, yeah, today we have our own website. It should be live very quickly. Uh, the ticket appliance and so on and so forth. Just to show you, show you how it was, so this was really on the top, the, <laughs> the first spreadsheet we had in the beginning. As you see, it was, uh, it was more than the network. There was also like phone information, a lot of things that was required to operate the network. And then you had the first, the really first capture of SNT was really uh, fancy, just a few buttons to configure your network. So that was the, the first evolution of it, trying to have uh, some uh, yeah, JavaScript in there. But yeah, and this was really the first, the first screen of PMP. So how it looked like a year ago. I have to say that since then it has really changed a lot. So to come back to our agenda, so I wanted yeah, first to, to introduce a little bit uh, PMP, then to speak about our choices. Why, did, uh, yeah, why do, would you need PMP? Speak about people behind PMP. <coughs> now I want to go a little bit more in depth of uh, in the in the, the tool itself. Speak about the installation. Uh, what are the features that are available today? And to wrap wrap it up, to uh, speak about the roadmap and where do we want to go in the the coming weeks, months. So yeah. PMP, if you want to understand it, first, for me, the most important things you have two points is your network. For me, the network is a database. Many people will just say the, the contrary, but at the end, the most uh, accurate information is the one that is configured on your device. So this is where we go and we fetch information and we store it in the database. The way we will do it is, is really based on your configuration file. So you have ways to influence the way you will um, scan your network and the information that will store in there. Uh, next to this, uh, every operation from your monitoring daemon and from the PMP, uh, PMP itself will create log files. So you can really, uh, I, for me it's very important that you can see if you start a uh, yeah, if you start a process, okay, what happened and why it happened like that. So um, also, yeah, the heart is the config files as well. So in your config files, you have way to really set your flags a little bit like Cisco. You can really say, I want to debug this and see and this, this and this and with this level of critis, 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 uh, criticality. So uh, for this feature, I want really to see everything on that. Uh, it can be very verbose. And this information is stored then in log files, and you can afterwards go and see what happened. Um, yeah, your monitoring daemon will either have its database or status file. External file, comment file, this is the way we used before. We worked before, is if you want to restart your daemon or send a command to your daemon, that was the command file. Uh, no, many things are just done through OMD itself. So the installation, um, two ways to do it. It's either, it will be either just um, a tar file that you, you install somewhere, you run setup, it will tell you all the problems are 
what you need to do to have it wor uh, working. And then uh, you will have your running environment. Uh, the idea was also to make it uh, as a uh, yeah, uh, virtual machine that you can just install somewhere on a, on a server. It's, yeah, today's working on many different environments. We just tested a few. Um, yeah. So what do we have in the current release? We have the topology, it's basically discovered through IP subnet. We need also the routing protocol to make a link between, uh, yeah, it's not because you have two interfaces that are in the same subnet that, are that they are adjacent. Uh, and also we use CDP because uh, for some networks where it's running, it's only a switching network, so you need somewhere, something to be able to make a, to link your devices in another way than just through IP or some nets, because when you're working with switches, it's VLAN, so it's, you need something else. Uh, what do we monitor today with this? Or do we build a config for interfaces for your environment? So it's also, it's most of the, uh, uh, we have a lot of plugins that we used for many years. So to, uh, to monitor your environment, so the router environment and report problems on this. And something that was added recently, we have a, in the tools itself, we have a local search engine. Best is to show you how, it's, how it works. So for example, here it's displaying a, a device and we, are, we would like to uh, search on all the devices in San Francisco. So you just, in the search uh, bar, you just type there the letters you want, like S-A-N, and it will just find you any, anything where you have the string you are looking for. And this is something I found quite useful. For example, you have a large network and you are searching for a customer. And you know you're the customer, you, have tr you know three letters for the customer name, you just search in there and you get the line, you get the interface. You know where this customer is connected. So this is, yeah, I thought, uh, and this works on every screen, so this search bar is everywhere. So what else do we have in the current version? Something I already explained before. So we can have uh, multiple management subnet per network. This was really a request from a friend of mine. He said, okay, uh, some devices are in one subnet, other in another. I want to be able to manage my network with this. Uh, as protocols, out of the box today, OSPF, BGP, those are the ones we are using the most. And the hardware, I had to update the, the slide, I didn't do it. We have Cisco, Juniper, Forstan, and HP. So, so I wanted to, yeah, to thank you for the attention. And at the end of this presentation, I uh, wanted to go quickly on what could be the future or the next step or the roadmap for PMP. So what are we working on today? It's really the code documentation. So uh, yeah, this is something I'm really, uh, I'm working with uh, Doxygen. I think most of you know about it and really documenting every, yeah, everything so that you can have a nice documentation of the code. Um, yeah, so far it used uh, FlatFi, so I'm working to, the database design is done, so to migrate everything to a database inside. To have our website ready, uh, and also some, I, we have been different, using different rendering, rendering devices to, to create the, uh, the, uh, the HTML and uh, to have the same look and feel for every page to have it homogeneous so that I so that for yeah on every page we have the same look and feel and everything works the same way uh, another point to be fair it's uh, more or less finished it's the integration with uh, checkmk because uh, today we're using plugins but the thing is that 
for some, in certain circumstances, CheckMK could be uh, really more powerful and uh, better. So, yeah, I would say I've been writing a lot of things. It's just a question to integrate it and also to make some design choices. How will, how will we integrate this in uh, the future? Uh, I have another point in my mind and I really want to go there. It's also I, in a network, it's really more and more layered network. So you have often first your optical network, then your layer two, layer three, and then on top of that, you have your VPNs. So to have your the, the, the discovery of all the VPNs, and then you can really have in uh, in a very nice manner directly your topology of your VPNs in your network. So for example, if you have a VPN between two devices, you can just say, okay, this is my world, this, is, uh, this customer is from there to there. Um, what else? MPLS check. To be fair, the code is there, but it's not enabled. Uh, why do not the support? So HP was the thing I wanted to add to there. It's now in the code. Uh, Google Map. I've done a lot of things. It's yeah, I've tried it. It's proof of concept. It works, but I really wanted to add this as well. So when you do the discovery of your device, then you can add your location to it and more information in your database. And when you build your your map, you can really then uh, yeah, have Google Map for your on your network and see a ge 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 geographical representation of your network uh, and some user interface customization. That uh, we um, yeah today we have a few views on the network. I would really want to have a lot of more views that can be user defined. So. That was it. I hope uh, it was interesting. If you have uh, any questions, feel free. Questions? How about IPv6 support? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, I know it's V6 is uh, at least in the research network, something really more and more used. Uh, today it's not in there. Um, I'm not sure. It's. I think it's rather easy to to add this support in there. It's. Uh, yeah, it's just another table in a database and yeah, another scan. So yeah, I think it's it's possible. Just from two hands, one head. <laughs> yeah, sure. Do you have a running uh, CheckMK environment now? Can you implement it? And um, you you have tags in CheckMK, so yep. I can tag the host in the web interface to the correct group because I have I have grouped it. Yeah. And uh, there's no reason to do to do the work again. Uh, yeah, I agree. But the thing is that okay. Um, I took the approach in the other way around. So the thing is that I had all my tools that is doing the discovery. CheckMK has also an inventory uh, that where you can, yeah. So the, my idea was at a certain time you need to do the link in between. And this is what I'm looking for at the moment, how to build a link between what CheckMK is doing and what my tool is doing. It's really to, so that at the end you have one yeah, one graphical place where you can define what you want to see. And uh, and so this is, I'm really thinking to that because the thing is that uh, what PMP has, it has a lot of rules to define this, what is important or not. And what I was thinking is if you have a uh, check MK, if does is inventory, and then you just have to tell him, okay, uh, this is all the things you have been uh, finding, but no, the user want only to monitor this and this and this. And all the rest is in there, but you you don't, don't monitor it. I, I'm not interested to see that. I'm I just to give you a small example, I'm not long ago I was playing with a machine, it has hundreds, nearly thousands of interfaces. And in there you just have a few I fifty or hundred that you need. Sometimes you need to be able to very quickly say, okay, I'm not on 
the 950 interfaces and uh, all those things, I'm not interested to monitor this because most, many of them are just virtual things, so they are always up. So I know that it's not re relevant for me. Maybe some of, a few of them will be important, but then the user can say, okay, this and this, this one I want to see, not the other one. And the thing is that you have to be able to push that back to the CheckMK. And this is, today I have a few ways to do it. And I would like, yeah, all IDs are good to, um, to make the match in between those. So, yeah, uh, to be fair, it's just to, uh, to understand how it works, I've been re rewriting a few of the plugins from CheckMK, and so now it how I know how it works. Now I'm really wondering how can I really um, what is the best way to to make the link in between those both words? That's the missing point of it. But then you have a very efficient way to uh, when you monitor everything because yeah, when you have devices that are huge, you need something very efficient to uh, to work. Ah, my experience. I <laughs> um, if I understand it correctly, um, the base of the technology is uh, scanning existing networks, yes? Yeah. Yeah. Um, can I import um, descriptions of existing networks? Uh, let's say I have a large number, 100, 200, 300 networks, which have to be scanned or have a uh, do this uh, manually. Um, I'm trying to. Uh, so, y do you mean that you have already the configuration, or you have the networks and you want to import? I them? have the networks. Yes, up and running for years. Yeah. Yeah, and um, try to import this into PMP. But to be fair, it's um, okay. I spoke about NCT. This is how NCT worked in the beginning. Okay. You just say, okay, start, and it was there, it took ages, but it was really discovering everything in one go. The thing is that um, a year ago, I said, okay, nice, but the problem with this is that if you have a very large network and uh, thousands of interfaces, it makes then you have hundreds of thousands of, uh, of things you have to, mon to, to find. If you start it, you really need a, <laughs> a lot of time before you get the information. And this is why I said, okay, I discover the devices, and then if you want to discover really each device, you have to perform it manually. And um, the, the <laughs> I would say the parameter is in the function. It's still there, so you just have to say true or false if you want to, to do it in one go. But if you do it in one go, yeah, if you have a really large network, it will really uh, eat a lot of CPU and time, but it's doable. So, um, yeah, this is why, uh, no, I do it device per device, but to be fair, we have like uh, 200 devices, and you, I can set up my network in, in an hour, less than that, from scratch. You give me a virtual machine in an hour, I have a, a running environment. Because even the you have a setup program, you just say, okay, uh, I need this, this, and this. You run it, and every time you just say, uh, it will stop if uh, there is an issue. And when you, you all go, you have your, then your um, GUI, uh, GUI, you have your web interface. And then, uh, honestly, so each device takes a few seconds. You click every time, refresh, refresh, refresh. And I would say in an hour or two, I have another environment up and running. And I've done it quite a few times for Large install based, far large, no, few hundred devices, so. <laughs> That's not large. <laughs> um, it's a uh, when you're having your network topology, um, is it possible to write out the parent-child logic? Um, it would be possible. Today I'm just doing, what I'm doing is I'm creating the uh, dot file, so the, uh, yeah, topology out of it. But uh, afterwards, to make this relationship would be rather simple. Uh, this would be very nice. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, it would not be, uh, s yeah. For me, it's not a problem to do it <laughs> really easily. It's, uh, but it's not in there. So. 
on the questions? How are you handling changes on, on your devices? So, for example, if new interfaces are popping up or going away, uh, how are you handling the, oh, sorry, the Nagus configuration then? But that's really the next step I said I want it to be proactive. So today it's really, um, okay, this is one of the things I would like to add in the proactive way, is that today you have to say, okay, I have been configuring a new interface or a new device or anything like this, and you still have to say, okay, refresh and build a config. To be fair, it's two minutes work. But uh, it would be n even better if the tools could just say, okay, I've been running this night at midnight and all of a sudden I see that this interface has disappeared and this one is gone, it's, it's arrived. So this would be, yeah, it would be really easy to do it uh, this is something I want to do. It's really to have something like, um, it could just be a cron tap, I would say. Something uh, as stupid as a cron tap and with the good command and afterwards it brings you with a report of what is important and what has been changed. And it's also a requirement I get from uh, some friends say, okay, I want just to say, okay, what's the det deterioration on uh, some services, something like this, something. So if you run this in the background and every night you get a report, okay, um, this is bad or this is deteriorating, it's very important and yeah. So yeah, it will be there but it's not there. Okay, thank you.